Good morning, everyone. I am Dr. Halim Lai, urology resident. With me, Dr. GM, my moderator. Uh, we are presenting uh, invasive management of neurogenic data. Previously, uh, last lecture was discussed with pharmacological management. Objective of my presentation are Botox injection, sacral neuromodulation, detrusor myomectomy, and augmentation cystoplasty. We shall discuss all one by one. First, we discuss the Botox. Botulinum toxin is a neurotoxin produced by Clostridium botulinum, a gram positive spore forming bacteria. Uh, of seven subtypes of botulinum, botulinum neurotoxin, subtype A is the longest duration of action, making it is the most relevant cl clinically. Commercially available names of Botox, commercially available names are the Botox, Despot, Xeomin, and Procygen. Uh, this is the mechanism of action. The picture shows the mechanism of action of Botox injection. Here, the normal physiology at uh, neuromuscular junction. Here, we uh, taken a small piece of neuromuscular junction at the bladder. That show a uh, nerve terminal here, synaptic cleft here, and smooth muscle. Updated some smooth muscle. Normally, what happens that uh, in the vesicle, the acetylcholine present, and the vesicle associated protein and a membrane bound protein, these attach, uh, and after attachment, the acetylcholine release at the synaptic cleft and uh, carries action at the nerve terminal for synaptic smooth muscle and causes the contraction of smooth muscle. What does an action acetylcholine? Contraction of smooth muscle. It causes contraction of smooth muscle, detrusor muscle. Action of Botox. What happens in the Botox? That, uh, when the Botox comes in the synaptic left, first the endocytosis of uh, Botox occurs in the nerve terminal. After endocytosis, it, it cleaves in the light chain and heavy chain. The light chain after uh, comes in the cystosol translo uh, translocation. That, that in the cystosol, the light chain cleaves the so, uh, vesicle associated protein and membrane bound protein. After the cleavage, there, there is no attachment of vesicle with the membrane attachment protein and there is no uh, release of acetylcholine. And by this, the Botox causes the inhibition of acetylcholine release. The clinical uses of uh, Botox injection are the neurogenic overactive bladder, pelvic floor spasticity, bladder pain syndrome, reduces the appearance of facial wrinkles, neck spasm, and excess fitting at armpit. Okay. So here Therapy see. for overactive bladder approved by U.S. FDA in cases of neurogenic bladder. Cystoscopy. Here it shows how the intravesical Botox is inserted. Botox is very important. 100 unit is diluted in 6 milliliters normal saline. Mixing is done by slowly injecting the saline as the sulfur bonds in botulinum toxin are very fragile. The stock solution of 6 milliliters is now aspirated in 3 syringes, 2 milliliters each. Each milliliter is further diluted to make six milliliters solution in each syringe. Approximately distance in injection is one centimeter. Now injecting Botox.
inject it at one centimeter apart away from the uterine orifices and try on. Side and is I think taking two four five seconds maybe more than that. And how much the needle should go? Is there is any guarding mark on the needle that it should be dipped one millimeter, two millimeter? This is important is because you might assembly. perforate the bladder. It is complete assembly of uh, an instrument. Hmm. The efficacy of injection intravesicular Botox. Randomized control trial have documented the clinical effects of onabotulinum neurotoxin A in both uh, uh, neurogenic detrusor overactivity and idiopathic detrusor over overactivity. Where in drug decreases the incontinence episodes, frequency, urgency, and improves the quality of life. This was a study in 2007, 2011, and 2012. The, the drug was also shown to be effective in patients with overactive bladder. A study in 2017-2013. The adverse effect of Botox injection are the bladder pain, urinary tract infection, hematuria, urinary retention, and it may also cause temporary inability to empty the bladder, which may require uh, sometimes CIC. Next topic of discussion is the sacral neuromodulation. What does mean by uh, neuromodulation is is by means. Uh, Alter the uh, alter or modify the action of a uh, nerve terminal terminal by uh, pharmacological drug or by electrical stimulation. There is no clear cut uh, uh, clear cut definition. There is no clear cut uh, mechanism action of the neuromodulation, but there is a hypothesis and theory behind the action of neuromodulation that suggests the action of uh, cycle neuromodulation. There is one hypothesis that uh, the neuromodulation activates somatic efferent exam that modulates sensory processing and maturation reflex pathway in the spinal cord. By this, the renal retention and dysfunctional voiding can be resolved by inhibition of the guarding reflex. And detrusor overactivity can be suppressed by direct inhibition of the bladder preganglion area. The inhibition of interneural transmission in efferent limb or maturation reflex can also block the detrusor overactivity. We shall see the mechanical action next slide. Targeting neural communication to restore function. Medtronic sacral neuromodulation for the treatment of overactive bladder mechanism of action. Overactive bladder, or OAB, is a urologic condition defined by urinary urgency with or without incontinence, urinary frequency, and or nocturia. OAV affects about 37.4 million adults in the United States. Neural pathways in the brain, spinal cord, and peripheral nerves together regulate urine storage and elimination through coordination of the bladder, urethra, and pelvic floor muscles. During bladder filling, sensory or afferent signals convey information on bladder fullness, in part via the sacral nerves. The signal travels up the spinal cord to the brain. In response to the pull sensation and at a socially appropriate moment, the descending motor or efferent brain pathways, which are under voluntary control, are activated by conscious thought. This causes the urethra and pelvic floor to relax and the bladder detrusor to contract, resulting in voluntary urine release. Dysfunction of the sensory and motor pathways alters the checks and balances that are critical to voluntary bladder control. In OAB patients, brain activity has shown abnormal responses in areas of the brain believed to be important in recognizing urge and frequency, and decreased activity in areas believed to be crucial to voluntary bladder control. Normal bladder functioning can be restored by influencing the sacral nerves, which convey a portion of the signals between the bladder, pelvic floor, and the brain. Medtronic sacral neuromodulation delivers electrical stimulation to a sacral nerve via an implanted neurostimulator. The neurostimulator provides an electrical charge to an area near the sacral nerve, 
resulting in altered neural activity. This stimulation likely depolarizes the nerve, causing an action potential that propagates impulses along the axon as if the neuron naturally fired an action potential. As a result, it is thought that abnormal sensory input from the bladder is modulated. OAB patients with sacral neuromodulation exhibit patterns of brain activation similar to that of patients with normal function when compared with OAB patients without sacral neuromodulation. Patients without sacral neuromodulation. These effects are observed in areas of the brain involving sensation, awareness, urge, and timing of urination. This suggests that sacral neuromodulation patients experience normalized sensory signaling to the control centers of the brain, while motor pathways are uninhibited so as not to suppress voluntary voiding. Unlike other therapies that target the bladder, bladder regulation via sacral neuromodulation occurs without physically influencing the bladder or sphincter muscles. Vetronic sacral neuromodulation with the interstim system is a safe and minimally invasive treatment option for refractory OAB patients that provides continuous control through effective long-term therapy delivery. So this is the picture in the Campbell which shows how the sacral neuromodulation affects the or inhibit the overactive bladder activity. So what does sacral neuromodulation inhibit the pregangrenic parasympathetic fiber that causes the contraction of the retrusion muscle? And it also inhibits the bladder efferent pathway in the uh, smooth muscle at, at, the, at the bladder neck. By this inhibition, the contraction reduces and patient void. A rational of neuromodulation to facilitate the voiding. What does in, in the cases of uh, neuromodulation and to facilitate widening, it causes the inhibition of the butinal nerve, somatic butinal nerve at the external uh, urethral sphincter. By the inhibition of the, this external urethral sphincter or the guarding reflex, the patient can wide. But in neuro neurogenic bladder, the guarding reflex is overactive and it causes the urinary retention. By sector neuromodulation, this, this inhibition occurs. This is the uh, full implant procedure, how, how to proceed with sector neuromodulation and placement of implant. The intergluteal fold. The desired foot response for S3 is a plantar flexion of the great toe and occasionally other toes. For women, the S3 sensory response is often vaginal sensation extending to the perineum and rectum. In men, the common S3 sensory response is sensation in the rectum extending to the scrotum. To insert the lead introducer, first remove the foramen needle stylet and replace it with the directional guide. Then, gently remove the foramen needle, being careful to stabilize the directional guide so it is not removed. Make a small skin incision at the exit site of the directional guide. Using live fluoroscopy, Place the lead introducer sheath and dilator over the directional guide and advance into the foramen. Twist the hub of the dilator to unlock it from the introducer sheath. Remove the directional guide and dilator, leaving the introducer sheath in place. The timed lead has four electrodes, numbered 0, 1, 2, and 3. 0 is the deepest, most distal electrode. Insert the timed lead into the introducer sheath and advance the lead to the proper depth. To confirm the ideal lead placement, ensure all four electrodes are distal to the introducer sheath and test for response. Once appropriate responses are obtained, the tines can be deployed. To deploy the tines, hold the lead in place and carefully withdraw the introducer sheath. The tines will deploy as the sheath is removed. The lead stylet is removed along with the introducer sheath. Test all four electrodes again to confirm previous responses after deployment. Obtain final lateral and AP images. Identify where the neurostimulator will be placed and inject local anesthetic at the skin and surrounding tissue. The pocket site should be located below the iliac crest and lateral to the edge of the sacrum. 
make an incision just large enough to accommodate the implanted components. Create a pocket using blood dissection and electrocautery. It should be no deeper than one inch for the 3058 Interstim 2 INS to ensure proper telemetry with the physician programmer. To avoid infection, it is recommended that the neurostimulator implant site be irrigated with antibiotic solution in sterile water. Do not use saline. Using the tunneling tool loaded with the passing straw, tunnel from the lead incision to the pocket incision, taking care to avoid damage to the lead. Make sure the tunneler passes through the fat and is not too superficial. Unscrew the tip and remove the tunneling tool, leaving the straw in place. Carefully pass the lead through the straw until it emerges at the pocket site. Create a pocket using blood dissection and electrocautery. It should be no deeper than one inch for the 3058 Interstim 2 INS to ensure proper telemetry with the physician programmer. To avoid infection, it is recommended that the neurostimulator implant site be irrigated with antibiotic solution in sterile water. Do not use saline. Using the tunneling tool loaded with the passing straw, tunnel from the lead incision to the pocket incision, taking care to avoid damage to the lead. Make sure the tunneler passes through the fat and is not too superficial. Unscrew the tip and remove the tunneling tool, leaving the straw in place. Carefully pass the lead through the straw until it emerges at the pocket site. Remove the straw at the pocket site. Drive the contact points on the lead and insert the lead into the header of the neurostimulator, making certain the blue tip is inserted as far as possible. Use the torque wrench to tighten the set screw on the header until you hear a click. If the lead cannot be advanced, use the torque wrench to back the set screw out slightly. Do not remove the set screw. After confirming proper fit, insert the neurostimulator into the pocket with the edge side facing outward, away from the muscle. Irrigate with antibiotic solution in sterile water. Do not use saline. With the neurostimulator in the pocket, Use the physician programmer to check impedance and verify that all interstim system components are correctly connected and tightened. Assure hemostasis and close the pocket with subcutaneous and skin closure, taking care to leave no dead spaces. Secure the incision and exit site with dressing. Use the clinician programmer to program the neurostimulator and document the settings. Provide the patient information on post-op care follow-up guidelines, and instructions on how to use their handheld patient programmer. And so, injection of sacral nerve modulation, are, it can be used in non-obstructive urinary retention in cases of overactive bladder and chronic fecal incontinence. The contraindication of sacral nerve modulation may be, it, it cannot be used in the urinary obstruction, pelvic infection, severe or rapidly progressive neurological disease, are also relatively contraindicated for sacral neuromodulation therapy. Next topic of discussion is the retrusal myomectomy or bladder augmentation, bladder auto augmentation. What does in the retrusal myomectomy? It is a simpler, less morbid alternative to uh, interior cystoplasty. It involves the excision of portion of retrusal muscle, allowing the bladder epithelium and the lamina propria to form a large mouth bladder diverticulum. As the urethrium bulges through the muscularis hiatus, the bladder capacity increased and intravesical storage pressure are reduced. Uh, next is auto augmentation demucularized interior cystoplasty. The combination of auto augmentation and ability of bowel, to, uh, bowel and stomach to survive with the removal of their epithelial lining. And the, in each, uh, the initial combined approaches uses the stomach as a source of muscle with colon as an alternative. The mucosa of the gastric pedicle flap is removed and the remaining muscularis is, muscularis is flap is transferred to an auto-augmented bladder. The potential metabolic complication in, in the urinary reconstruction with bowel are due to the presence of gastrointestinal mucosal layer that are uh, obvious in this case. The advantages uh, of the auto augmentation demucularized interior cystoplasty are the risk associated with GI segment incorporation into the urinary tract are obviated. These are the metabolic acidosis, stone formation, and can be performed in patients who have bowel disease like Schwarzgard syndrome or inflammatory bowel disease. 
those with period episodes of peritonitis and the disadvantage may be they need to use a CAC after the procedure and there is a risk of spontaneous bladder perforation. Next topic of discussion is the augmentation cystoplasty. One more problem is uh, with this, which is uh, it, it works after one year or two years of follow. Uh, it has no immediate uh, uh, outcome or results. And second, it is only for idiopathic causes, not for neuropathic causes, this myectomy. But it's now obsolete because uh, uh, initially it was started in 1989 and then after 2012, I could not find any literature about it uh, because of these these problems. Uh, uh, it will work after one year and it is uh, only used in uh, idiopathic causes, not for neuropathic cause, causes. And uh, uh, problem with perforation of bladder because this bladder will act as a diverticulum. So uh, CIC is mandatory for these cases. So, uh, because of that, uh, this procedure is not done nowadays. Uh, it, it was replaced by another procedure, uh, interposing a gut without uh, mucosa at this mucosa, but it is also not uh, successful and not, it's not done in clinical practice. So, it's in literature, but uh, people are not doing it. And we also, I have also haven't done it, and maybe we should do in few cases and see what is happening. Uh, so, there are problems with this uh, technique, uh, myomectomy. And also, it is not for fibrotic bladders. Bladder should be of good capacity and with normal mucosa. So there are limitations for this myectomy. Thank you, sir. The next topic of discussion is augmentation cystoplasty. Augmentation cystoplasty are a well-established technique that typically involves adding an enteric segment to the bladder to increase its size. The goal of therapy are the urine accommodation in a bladder at low pressure, improve, improved bladder capacity, decrease incontinence related to a reducer or activity, and preservation of renal function. Performing patients uh, who have failed or who are not candidate for more conservative form of intervention. The types of cystoplasty are clamp cystoplasty and substitution cystoplasty. What does in, uh, this is the picture for the clamp cystoplasty. In the clamp cystoplasty, bladder is bivalved in, uh, in the, uh, two segments, anterior and posterior, that uh, appears as a clamp shell. By this, uh, this technique got his name. But in the substitution cystoplasty, substitution cystoplasty what does occur in the, in the small capacity bladder, uh, TB bladder, the uh, dome of the bladder is removed and uh, replaced only replaced with a gut segment like cecum or colon or something else. And it is uh, only replaced with bladder trigone. The indication of augmentation cystoplasty are poor bladder compliance, reduced bladder capacity, and significant detrusor overactivity failed all other procedures to reduce high pressure bladder. The contraindication of augmentation cystoplasty are bowel disease like inflammatory bowel disease, irradiated bowel, short gut syndrome, and, and the bladder pathological condition that would make impossible using the bladder. And there may renal disease are the relative contraindication. The GI segment used in the augmented cystoplasty, uh, there may be uh, ileum, sigmoid colon, cecum, and stomach. First is the ileocystoplasty. Ileocystoplasty, most common time because of the reconstructed urologist familiarity with ileum uh, and ileum ability to easily reach to the pelvis. There, is a, there are the less significant metabolic, uh, metabolic disturbance in the cases of ileocystoplasty. Next is cholecystoplasty. And sigmoid colon can be uh, uh, redundant in chronically constipated neuro, uh, neurogenic patient. It's easy, easy to position on the bladder and has a large lumen and uh, abundant mesenteric bladder supply. Disadvantages are the more significant metabolic disturbance, increased mucus production, and increased risk of malignancy. Iliocysto, um, 
Iliosicosistoplasty. It is an ability to use iliosical well along with terminal ileum to create a continent catheterizable channel. There is a risk of vitamin B12 deficiency in this one. Gastrocystoplasty advantages are the decreased mucus production, less bacterial colonization, and disadvantages are there may be a risk of hematuria, dysuria syndrome, peptic ulcer in the bladder, augment, augment perforation, and hyperchloremic, hyponatremic alkalosis, increased gastrin production, and risk of malignancy. Complexion of augmentation uh, injury cystoplasty, stone formation, metabolic complication, mucus production, recurrent UTI, vowel obstruction, hematuria, dysuria syndrome, small vowel bacterial growth, and persistent vesicouteric reflex, obstruction at the site of reimplantation, reservoir perforation, malignancy, and there may be uh, a revision of surgery. The metabolic complication of endocystoplasty in cases of ectomic, there may occur a hypochloremia, hypokalemia, metabolic acidosis, and there is elevated uh, aldosterone. In cases of jejunum, hypochloremia, hyperkalemia, hyponatremia, metabolic acidosis with elevated renin and angiotensin. In the cases of ileum, hypochloremia, hypokalemia, hypocalcemia, and metabolic acidosis. In cases of colon, hyponatremia, hypokalemia, hypocalcemia, and metabolic acidosis. Alternative uh, to the augmentation in cystoplasty are the urethrocystoplasty, vesicomyomectomy, Seromuscular augmentation, alloplastic replacement, and bioprosthetic material. Okay.